morning. Please join us in singing our opening hymn. It's found in the blue hymnal in your pew rack, the blue hymnal, hymn number 74, Blessed Be the King Who's Coming. Hymn 74 in the blue hymnal in your pew rack. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the King who's coming, is in the name of God. He offers to the burdened the rest and grace they need. Gentle lazy and humble, at light his yoke shall be. For he would have us bear it, so he can make us free. Our King and Savior draws near. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, let us ask our Father in heaven to fill our hearts with grace. Heavenly Father, we look forward to the celebration of Christmas and to the coming of the Lord in glory. 
Bless this Advent wreath and all of us, our relatives and friends, as we pray daily around it. Fill us with your life and strengthen us for our daily tasks. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the dangers that beset us through our sins and be a redeemer to deliver us, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue this Advent, give light to our eyes and peace to our hearts. May the Lord find us watching and waiting in joy when he comes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Together we say, light one candle for hope, one bright candle for hope. He brings hope to every heart. He comes, he comes. Light one candle for peace, one bright candle for peace. He brings peace to every heart. He comes, he comes. Light one candle for joy, one bright candle for joy. Every nation will find salvation in Bethlehem's baby boy. Light one candle for love, one bright candle for love. He brings love to every heart. He comes, he comes. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is taken from 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 11 and 16. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, thus said the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and I've cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest 
from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read in unison Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4 and verses 19 to 26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all nations, generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set a crown upon a warrior and have exalted I announce him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Good morning, all saints. The second lesson is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamations of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed. And through the prophetic writing, he is made known to all Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Turning in the blue hymnal to hymn number 365. Please stand and join us in singing the angel Gabriel from heaven came. Him number two, six, five in the blue hymn. His wings and trees to speak 
My song In the sixth month, angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have been have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now... Your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I want to talk with you just a few moments about a problem, a promise, and an invitation. A problem, 
a promise and an invitation. For those of you who have been in the city a while, you may have heard of the Winans family. And the patriarch of the Winans family was a man who uh, went by two nicknames. One of them was Skippy and the other one was Pop. And Pop Winans had a catchphrase, something that he would say all of the time. You could always count on him to pepper this phrase in if you ever spoke with him any length of time. And I've had several conversations with Pop who since died, uh, but he was always the same everywhere you went all the time. It didn't matter if you was outside or at a restaurant, always the same. And one of the things that he would say is God is a wonder. God is a wonder. He was also known for clapping real loud. God is a wonder. And so as the winers got popular uh, and they started attending, uh, going to some of the Grammy shows, some of the award shows, and Pop would go with them, they had the opportunity to meet Stevie Wonder. Now, I know, know that you all know who Stevie Wonder is. And he met Stevie and was gracious. And the story goes that when they got uh, away from Stevie, uh, Pop said, I don't know why that boy calling himself a wonder. Because ain't nobody a wonder but God. I believe that boy will get healed if he stop calling himself wonder. Because the only wonder is God. I, I said that to say because I think that story illustrates something uh, that I know we know intuitively, but I think sometimes in practice we forget that the only wonder is God. And I know in the West, even some of the poorest among us have enough creature comforts uh, that we might get it in our minds that we had something to do with our varying levels of success. That, you know, I am the one that took the exam. I am the one that got the job. I am the one that goes to work every day. I am the one that signed the lease. I am the one that paid the mortgage. I am where I am because of me. And I think what we have to remember is that the only reason why you are even alive is because God willed it to be so. Am I in the right church this morning? Yeah. Uh, that, that, that no matter what you do, uh, you cannot make your chest go up and down, right? That that is God who is allowing it to be so. And, and, and the problem, the problem that I'm talking about is sometimes when we start feeling really good about ourselves, when we start feeling really good about our accomplishments, sometimes in, in, the, in the, the heat of that good feeling, we, we say things, we, we make promises, we, we say all of the wonderful things that we're going to do. Lord, if you bless me with this car, I'll always pick the saints up and make sure they get to church. Have you ever said that? Lord, if you let me hit the lottery, I'll make sure that the church is taken care of. Have you ever said that? But we say things and we, we make these bargains with God. God, if you get me out of this bar and get my head out of this toilet, I promise you I'm never drinking again, right? Uh, we make promises to God and God being God knows that without his help, without his aid, without his intervention, without his guidance, you won't be able to do any of it. Because as well-meaning as, as the bargain you made with God is, that unless God allows your chest to go up and down, unless God puts breath in your body, there will be nothing that you can do to accomplish what it is that you told God that you would do. So, 2 Samuel finds David. He's resting 
on his laurels. He's grown complacent. The Philistines are licking their wounds. And David is feeling really good because in the time uh, that there has been peace from the Philistines, he has been able to order some really expensive wood, cedar wood from forests in Tyre. He has been able to get some artisans and some craftsmen and some carpenters to come and build his palace in Jerusalem. And in all of this time, David is sitting on his throne, sipping a pina colada or whatever the ancient world's equivalent of a pina colada is. And he says, you know what? I have a problem. I live in this great, fantastic, beautiful palace, but God lives or dwells in curtains. He lives in a tent, and that's not right. I, I, I'm the king. I, I ought to be able to do something about that. I, I am the king. I have fought wars. I have won wars. I have defeated enemies. I have a name for myself. I have a 401k. I have money saved up. I am rich as cream. I should be able to do this thing for God. But the problem is when God heard of it, God said, David, David, you are not the one that's going to build this house. You see, because God has the ability, because he is God, to look down the line and see all of the oops, the bleeps, and the blunders that David is going to make. But here's what God does. God tells David, I know what you're trying to do, and I really touched. I, I, I am. Nobody's ever offered this to me before, and I've never asked anybody to do this for me before, and I, I'm really touched. But David, here's what I'm going to do for you. Instead of you building me a house, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build you into a house. He told David, instead of you building me a house. I'm going to build you into a house. I'm going to build you into a dynasty. I'm going to build you into a lineage. I'm going to build you into somebody that everybody is going to know your name. Here, here, here's the problem, if you haven't heard it yet, is that sometimes we can get so far up in life that we forget that God is the one that got us there in the first place. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 7. It says the king said he was going to do this. The king said he was going to do that. But when God talks, God tells his prophet Nathan to go tell my servant what I want him to do. Go tell my servant what I am saying to you. Because guess what, folks? While we think we are a king, to God, we're just his servants. God is not impressed by our accolades. He is not impressed by our zip code. He is not impressed by your degrees because God knows the real you, right? Those same lips that you use to make those million dollar deals to get that executive position, he the one that made those lips, you understand? And so God is not moved by our greatness. He is not moved by our ego. Am I going too fast? God is not moved by our ego. He has his own plan and his own purpose for us. You see, here's the thing. Here's what God told David. David, I, I, I need to, to uh, the, the young folks say, I, I need to sun you a little bit. Have you ever heard that expression? I, when, when an old man, when an older gentleman is talking to a young man and kind of sets him in place, sometimes that, that older gentleman is sunning a young man. When he says, son, let me tell you something. Right, because before you was born, I was already doing this, that, the third. I was already moving through this thing called life. So you got to get up pretty early if you want to get one over on me. He sunned him a little bit. God told David, he said, David, I, I want you to remember that if it weren't for me, you'd still be a shepherd of your daddy's sheep. David, if, if, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't be the king. You'd still be playing harp for somebody who was trying to kill you. David, David, if it wasn't for me, nobody would know your name. 
Okay, but David, because you have demonstrated that you can turn your ego off, because you have demonstrated that you can lean and depend and trust on me, what I am promising you, David, is that if you keep this up, I'm going to make it so that everybody in the world knows your name. If you trust me, if you let me lead, if you let me, God, if you let me build you up, nobody is going to be able to take you down. If you let me build you up, nobody is going to be able to tell you to stand in the back of the room. If you let me build you up, nobody is going to make you sit on the back of the bus. If you let me build you up, everybody is going to be able to look past your skin, past your gender, past your, uh, your tax bracket, and see the child of God that I have made. If you let me build you I know you want to build something for me, but God is saying, what I really want to do is I want to build you. And here again, here's the problem. Here's the problem. If God does not intervene with us, if God does not talk to us, if God does not have a little fireside chat with us, sometimes what we will do is we will make the thing that we are building for God and somehow make it about us. Are you hearing me this morning? If we're not careful, we'll take the very thing that we were so committed to do for God, and because our flesh and our ego gets in it, we'll somehow make it about us and not about God. We'll say things like, this is my church, or, 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 or this is my money. Or, or, or this is my committee. And we'll forget all about the reason why you ran or the reason why you gave or the reason why you support the church is because you want something for God. Am I in the right house this morning? Uh, and so, so, so the problem is uh, we got to, we have to understand that God wants to build something out of our lives. You see, David wanted to build God a temple. But what God was promising David was that I am going to raise up a son of yours, absolutely, who's going to build a temple. But it will not be a temple made with human hands. It will be the temple that I establish in the hearts of my people. That's why the Bible says, don't you know that your body is the temple of of the Holy Spirit. The church is not this building. The church is when we get together. The church is not this building. The church is who God is making us and molding us and shaping us to be. Is that all right? And so here's the thing. And, and so this is, it, because of this promise, so I, I, I know we was just sang the song about Mary and it's a wonderful hymn, but what I want you to hear is how important the seventh chapter of 2 Samuel is because it sets the tone for the rest of the Bible's story. Because God made this promise of David to David that he would build him a house and a lineage in a dynasty, that there will always be an heir on the throne. We fast forward just a thousand or so years, and we find ourselves in a little town called Nazareth. And there is this young girl who is minding her own business, who just so happened to be betrothed to the right man. And again, this is why I say you can't put too much stock on what you've accomplished, because really and truly, boo, it's been God moving you all along. It's been God working through, as the genealogy of Jesus teaches us, 40 in two generations. I want this one to marry this one. I want this one to die so they can marry that one. I don't, I don't want that one from over here. I want this from, one from over here because God is maneuvering people into place. Let me just pause and say something for free. Uh, your spiritual life may be feeling really turbulent right now, and I don't know what's going on, and it just seems like everything is upside down, and it just seems like every time I take two steps back, I get knocked but I, two steps forward, I get knocked five steps back. I want you to fear not. 
I want you to be calm. I want you to stand still. I want you to see the salvation of the Lord because God is just maneuvering you into position. It doesn't always feel good. It's not always convenient and it doesn't always make you happy, but don't worry about it. God is just maneuvering you into place. So what that person don't want to be your friend no more. That's all right. God is just maneuvering you in a place. So they fired you from the job. I'm so sorry to hear that, but God is just maneuvering you into place because when one door closes, God opens a window. When one door closes, he makes manna come down from heaven. When one door closes, he makes water come out of a rock. Am I quiet enough for you this morning? I'm really trying to hold it down for you. <laughs> all right, all right. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting happy. And so, and so, and so, he tells the angel Gabriel to come and interrupt Mary's plan you know, she's probably trying to figure out what kind of hairstyle she's going to wear for the wedding and what kind of dress she's going to wear for the wedding, what the bridesmaids going to wear. You know, uh, when Brittany got married, I was just so happy that she found that dress so fast. It was just, whoo, Lord, it was just wonderful. She looked it up online, went in there and got it. I was like, thank you, mighty God. This you keep doing great things for me, and I'm so thankful. Uh, worrying about all of those things, and the angel Gabriel comes in the midst of all of that and says, Hail Mary, full of grace, that God is getting ready to do something that is going to change your life. If you accept God's invitation to participate with his plan, if you accept God's invitation to do it God's way. If you accept God's invitation to participate and allow the Holy Spirit to overshadow you, the angel Gabriel says, I promise you, boo-boo, that everybody is going to know your name. If you participate, if you agree, if you say yes to God's will and yes to God's purpose and yes to God's plan, people in 2023 will still be singing about your yes. And I just rose to tell you this morning that if we as the members of All Saints Church Church, agree to do what God is calling us to do, and 40 years from now, people will still be talking about the mighty move of God that God initiated, that God started, that God completed through us. Is anybody glad about it? That is the purpose of why we celebrate Christmas. It's not about the baby. It's about the fact that God kept his promise to David. It's about the fact that God kept his promise to Mary. And if God could keep his promise to David, and if God could keep his promise to Mary, what do you think that means if God made you a promise? If he said it, it will come to pass. If he said it, it he will do it. The Bible tells us that he is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not spoken it, shall he not perform it? Hath he not sell it, shall he not make it good? We serve a God that keeps promises. We serve a God that brings joy and peace and hope and light. And just when we get tired of waiting, he shows up and refreshes us. Just when we get tired of hoping, he shows up and blesses us. I rose this afternoon on this foggy Sunday morning to tell you that whatever God has promised us as a church, whatever God has promised you as a believer, because I know all of you have beautiful, vibrant prayer lives, God is able and willing, and he will do just what he said. And so please don't cry too much longer because God is going to work it out. Please don't be concerned too much longer because God is going to work it out. Please don't be bothered too much longer because God is just maneuvering people in and out of your way, in and out of his way, in and out of the way so that God can establish us, you and I, as his people, as his kingdom. And you know what? 
the very thing that we said we want to do for God, God will let us do it as long as we acknowledge that he is the one that gives us the strength to do it. If you try to figure it out in your own mind, you will blow a gasket. If you keep trying to figure out how you're going to make it add up and how the math ain't math, then, then you will drive yourself crazy. But if you stand back and watch God do it, if I stop trying to build it and let God build it, then I know that it will come to fruition. If I stop trying to fix it and let God fix it, then I know that everything is going to be all right. If I stop trying to figure it out and just trust that God has already worked it out, then I know that everything that I need, everything that I desire, everything that I long for, will be brought to me in Jesus' name. That's not the laws of attraction. That's not playing with crystals. That's not going to get your palm read or your tarot uh, done. This is a promise from God. Trust him like Mary did. Trust him like David did so that your answer may be, be it unto me according to to thy word. Mary said, well, I don't have nothing else better to do, so I might as well trust you. I don't have anywhere else to go, so I might as well trust you. You have tried and failed in your trying to fix relationships, to fix congregational systems, to fix your money problems, to fix your own health. You've done that. Why don't you try Jesus? You've tried looking for love in all the wrong places. Why don't you try Jesus? Let God build you up. Why don't you let God do it for a change and see what wonderful, beautiful, gorgeous things God makes out of your life? So the problem, again, is that while we want to build something for God and don't know how, the promise is that God is going to build us instead. And so the invitation is to say, yes. Yes, I want what God is offering. Yes, I want what God is giving. Yes, I want the bread and I want the wine to go with it. Yes, I want all of the things that God has for me. Because if God builds the house, if God builds the house, then I know that my labor will not be in vain. If you believe it, let the church say amen. Standing as you are able, let us speak the words of our beautiful and ancient Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious pilot. He suffered death from his burial. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
and you ascended into heaven, you seated at the right hand of the Father, and you come in the name of glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Rejoicing with Mary that the word comes among us, let us offer to God our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our hearts willing surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May we discover in true spiritual virginity the richness of what God alone can do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and in all the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. May the God of mystery who dwells in unapproachable light draw us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May our assembly of disciples be a womb and a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power, so that we may give birth to Christ from the womb of our community for the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May our deepest hearts find strength in the gift of the blessed hope that what God has begun to do in our world and in all persons by Christ's saving work will be brought to his fullness by our Savior. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord May we remember before God who, all who are in need or who cry for the presence of God, especially. Catherine G, Catherine L, Charles, Lisa, Daryl, David, Dean, Delano, Dennis D, Edward G, Emmett, Eric, Quintilla, Helenor, Janice, Janie, Joseph, Joy C, Jamar, Pat, Anna B, Lena, Lenore, Lucia, Marcus R, Martha, Muriel, Nicole, Oscar, Patrick, Pauline G, Rebecca M, Robert W, Roslyn, Ruby, Sheila A, Valerie, Vicki, Wanda. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May those who have died live eternally in the presence of God, in whom all find comfort and peace. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Please offer your own intercessions at this time. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Moses, Bishop of the Dominican Republic, Elizabeth, Donald, and Craig, Bishops in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, St. John Detroit, St. Paul the Apostle, Jemani, Dominican Republic, and for all the clergy and people. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear. Call us to yourself, O God, as you called Mary, that we may be formed into a dwelling of holiness, giving life to all the peoples of the world through Mary's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left done. We have not left you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, in the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please exchange signs of God's peace. Good afternoon and happy fourth Sunday of Advent. It's not quite Christmas Eve yet, although it looks like it. It's so dark outside, but as the day as the day goes on, sure enough, uh, we will uh, catch up to to Christmas Eve. And I am so glad that all of you are here this morning and pressed your way um, in this uh, really foggy weather. Uh, uh, I'm grateful for this and not snow. That's so right. I'm just glad to, uh, yes, uh, the bishop prayed for snow last year, and I have it on good authority that she was uh, um, humbly asked not to do so this year. Um, and it seems that she has complied with, with the diocesan request. Uh, and so uh, we, are, we are glad that you are here this morning. We're going to move forward in our service uh, to the service of the table, to the service of Holy Communion. And all who claim the faith of Jesus share with us in baptism, who want to do something for God, but realize that they need his strength to do it. I invite you to come forward and take strength unto yourself. Take this bread and this wine, this further nourishment in addition to the word of God, uh, strength and solace and comfort uh, for your soul so that you may do all that you have in your heart to do for God. Um, and just as the story illustrates from Second Samuel, that God would not be confined to a stone house, uh, we know that the presence of God that is made available to us in the Eucharist is not confined to this room. That all of those who are watching online while we are communing with God in the spirit here in the church, you can commune with God in the spirit at Home, knowing that God is nigh you, uh, very near your own mouth, as the Bible says, all you have to do is open your heart to receive him. Uh, let every heart prepare him room. And so if you make room for Jesus while we're making ready for the table, making ready the table, I trust that by the end of our Eucharistic prayer, you might look up and feel the presence of Jesus right there in your home. Um, and so while we're doing that, you may also uh, feel led to support the work of this parish with a gift of your leg, life and labor, a token of your life and labor. Uh, you can do that by going online to allsaintsdetroit.org and clicking on the giving tab. There are some of you in the room today who also give online. Uh, you can do that right now as we are preparing the offering. And then uh, all of us who wish to put something in the plate, we can do that too while the ushers are moving up the aisle. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 10 and the black and red hymn. So the black and red hymnal that's in your pew rack, lift up your voice and sing to 
our hymn that we'll sing while the offertory is being collected and the table is being set is hymn number 10, Oh, What a Beautiful City. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave him so forth an offering and sacrifice to God. Well, a The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good 
and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearance. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Father Almighty. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this. All of it. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph and St. Matthew and St. David and all your saints. We may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to see. Daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, we do. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Good afternoon, all saints. My name is Roger Weeks, and I am the junior warden. On behalf of the Vestry Board and Reverend Estes, we'd like to wish you a happy or Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. And I also would like to take this opportunity to welcome all of you here in the sanctuary and those who are visiting us on Zoom. We hope that today's service is such that it moves you in such a way that you will receive God in your life. And we welcome you to come back and join us next Sunday. I will kindly ask you to turn to page 16 in the bulletin for a few announcements. I also bring your attention to our mission statement. And then I would like to, on behalf of the Stewardship Committee, thank all of you for your 2024 financial commitment to our ministries. If you have not yet returned your commitment letter, please place your commitment letter in the offertory plate. Christmas services. Um, on the 24th, which is today at St. Matthew St. Joseph, at 6 p.m., lessons and carols. And then at 7, there's a Holy Eucharist followed by a reception. All are invited. And then tomorrow here at All Saints is 11 a.m. worship service. So we'd like to see you all back here tomorrow at 11 a.m. to celebrate the birth of Christ on Christmas. And then on the 31st, All Saints Church at 11.30 a.m. lessons and carols. Also reminding you that the office will be closed on Tuesday, but reopens on Wednesday and Thursday. We are seeking members for the con from the congregation to serve on the vestry board. The elections of new members will occur at our annual meeting on Sunday, January 20th to 28th. To serve, you must be a member in good standing, attend church service regularly, commit at commitment of time and talent, be over 16 years of age and a member for a year. Following, you can read up on the duties and the role of the vestry. So if you have the gift in the area of administration and can work well with others, please consider running for the vestry. If you love Jesus and want to help lead and, mo and, mo and model how our congregation can grow in faith, hope, and love, please consider running for the vestry. And if you're interested or have any questions, please see yours truly or Miss Juanita Woods or Catherine Blakely, members of the nominating committee. You can also contact the church office and leave a message. On the following page, I would also like to bring to your attention 
all church ministries, committees, and organizations should submit their annual report by, by Friday, January 19th, 2024. All reports should be sent electronically to the church office. If you have any questions, please call the office during regular business hours. I believe that concludes our important announcement, even though all are important. I would uh, welcome Ms. Woods, our senior warden, who may have one for us. If you didn't hear, we would like to have volunteers to assist at the altar and decorate in the altar. And also there's coffee hour following the service. There'll be no coffee hour tomorrow. We will come worship and then leave and go home and celebrate Christmas with family. I kindly appreciate your attention. I'll turn the service back to Reverend Estes. All right, we've got our marching orders for mission out in the world. There's nothing left to do but say the blessing and get ready to get out of here. Please stand for the blessing. I do look forward to seeing as many of you that can and will at uh, a joint Christmas Eve service at St. Matthew's and St. Joseph's. We are. Uh, uh, pulling out all the stops, as it were, to make the service very, very nice. So we do hope that you will join us tonight, starting at 6. Thank you. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is in the blue hymnal, hymn number 83, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Hallelujah. Listen to this world to love and serve the Lord and our neighbors. Thank mm -hmm. you. 